Animation is the illusion of life. It's the process of capturing successive pictures or drawings and displaying them in a sequence to create the illusion of movement. Krita offers tools for traditional animators, as we have already seen. And to complete this training, although it's not about animation itself, I want to give you a quick overview of the creation process. Let's get started. Animation starts with planning, the most important step. It's even more important than the sprite equivalent, that is blocking. An animation is made of many drawings, which all have to be coherent for the motion to look believable, and more importantly, for it to be appealing as well to the viewer. The planning phase allows you to know how many drawings you'll need and how your character will behave. Planning itself is split into two essential steps. We start with acting, by defining who the character is, what he'll do, and by then playing the scene a number of times. Yes, we have to play ourselves. A good animator will generally be a decent actor as well. There are two main benefits that come along with acting. First, we'll record the scene with a camera, which will give us a nice reference to study for our planning. Second, we get to feel what's happening in our body, mechanically and emotionally speaking. How our weight is shifting, if we are putting strain on our muscles, if our emotions are changing. Biomechanics make up for a fair part of the foundations of character animation, and so do the ability to understand how we feel and how our emotions shift over time. Once we have our performance recorded, it'll be time to move on to the second step in planning, that's analysis. So we're going to analyze our footage in a number of ways. We have to break down the sequence into smaller moves to get a sense of the timing and the contrast in terms of spacing in each section. We want to look at our scene through the lens of each principle of animation. Timing and spacing are the first two, but there's plenty of these, including exaggeration, arcs, squash and stretch, or overlapping action. There's a lovely video that showcases the 12 principles of animation in action, and a linked Tumblr blog. It'll give you a good sense of what these are all about. By analysis, I don't mean that we just have to stare at our footage and take notes. You can take notes, that's really useful, but you can take visual notes. In general, we create a series of rough drawings, but with good proportions, representative of the final animation. And that's our analysis. That's how we get to break down the movement, just like we would look at a naked person and draw them to understand the human anatomy. Uh, we create strong reference for ourselves. Because yes, the analysis of our reference footage mostly allows us to plan our key poses. That is the most important poses in our animation. These drawings are often referred as the extremes as they delimit the amplitude of the movement. They are the most characteristic poses of our animation. You probably get it by now, but these are essential. With the key poses alone, we have to tell a story. What is the character doing? What does he feel? How are his feelings changing? The main poses are here to answer these questions, and they will allow your art director to give you feedback before you start spending hours and hours into production. After the key poses come the breakdowns. As the name suggests, they break down the motion. They are also called in-betweens as they come between key poses. Be careful though, because they don't come in the middle of two key poses, be it timing or spacing wise. They define the emotion as well and the acceleration or deceleration in your moves. They are also foundational to your animation. So finding all these poses and drawing them roughly is part of the planning process. You can do it in two ways. You can either draw everything on a sheet, be it a piece of paper or a large Krita document. Or you can directly create a very basic, sloppily drawn animation. I used to do the former when I studied animation, but now I prefer to use the timeline and nudge frames around. This helped me to find snappier timings. As I told you, all we looked at so far is planning, which means we're not going to use any of the frames we sketched as they are. 
Generally, we'll first do a pass called the rough, which is a form of blocking. It is a sketchy, yet fairly accurate version of our animation. We start with the key poses, fill in the main breakdowns based on the analysis that we have done so far, and you want to really nail your poses, as you'll be tracing over them as part of the refining or the inking step. That is to say, you are trying to get the proportions of the character and the position of every body part right in space. Then, your lines don't have to be perfect, because that's what refining or inking is all about. And then you have coloring that comes last. That's for the big picture, because there is a lot to say about the actual animation process. First of all, we are talking about traditional animation, but for modular and 3D animation, which is what I studied, it's different. In those types of animation, the workflow is much more like the game sprite creation pipeline, with planning, blocking, refining, and polishing stages. However, the principle of animation and posing are the exact same thing. Second, you can follow the pose-to-pose -pose workflow religiously, that is to say what we are talking about in this video, but there is another way to create animations called straight ahead, in which you animate frame by frame, moving forward. It gives you a more spontaneous result at the expense of precision, and you often end up redoing frames afterwards. But it's very hard to use without experience, that's why I'm not making a video about that and talking about pose to pose. As a beginner, you really want to go through all the steps of the process to get a nice animation at the end. But as a more experienced animator, you're going to naturally mix the two workflows more and more. Now you know what the animation workflow is like. But I have to tell you that if you've never animated before, this domain requires a great deal of patience. If you skip any step, and especially if you decide not to plan your work, it's likely not going to end up looking great in the end. There is also a lot to learn about how to animate. Body mechanics, numerous principles, acting, it takes a lot of time and a lot of practice. This training project is not about animation, and this video is just a little bonus for those of you who'd like to get started animating. I'll leave you with some extra resources so you can learn a bit more on your own. Anyway, have fun animating, and we are getting to the end of the course, so I wanted to say thank you for following along until now. See you in the next video.